Cavalier to, uh, to do several months ago. He's put this together especially for you. And it is Gen AI Tactics for L&D from prompts to automation. We've been doing a lot of webinars about AI and Gen AI. And recently, last week, we did one about spatial learning. So I, I'm glad you could join us today, but realize that we have a lot of other material for you. And you can see that right under the chat here, I have put a little, I'm moving this around now for you so you can see it. I have a link there to more recordings that Josh Cavalier has made for us. And I'll show you how you can find even more. But welcome to the session. We're so glad you could come today. I'm Gary Van Antwerp. I'm the producer of the uh, 300 per year uh, <laughs> webinar series for Training Magazine Network and for Sales and Marketing Management or SMM Connect, you see there on the screen. I want to welcome you and thank you for joining. Uh, I've been doing this for 15 years now and uh, I, I, I've never enjoyed a job so much and you folks make it all uh, very worthwhile every day. Now we've got a lot of other people that help us with this uh, series and Tim Hagen's going to be back to talk about building a coaching framework. I know many of you are interested in um, in LinkedIn and, and uh, uh, marketing yourself through LinkedIn and so forth. So I asked Debbie Allen to do this session. It's coming up on May 8th. Uh, stand up, get it noticed and create influence with expert marketing positioning. And then Wendy Kirkpatrick is going to be here. Jim's not going to be available that day, but uh, Vanessa Alzate is also going to be here from Anchor Training, and they're the new owners of Kirkpatrick Partners. And, and so they're going to be here to be talking about demystifying training evaluation using the Kirkpatrick model. Okay, we have a lot coming up on training evaluation, whether it's the Kirkpatrick or or uh, or Ken, uh, I can't remember his last name, and I have some others coming up. So watch the schedule carefully. Now, here's something else. A friend of Josh's, uh, Dr. Marcus Bernhardt, will be here on May 29th. Okay, so you might mark this down on your schedule, on your calendar, May 29th. And, and Marcus is going to be talking about beyond content and the rise of AI in transforming learning modalities. We haven't had anybody else talk about this. I was looking for an, a real expert on this. Josh uh, recommends uh, Marcus and I do too. Uh, uh, so I hope you can join us for that one. Of course, we'll record it for you if you can. not Now, Josh is also teaching a training live and online course. This is where you go attend online two, three, four sessions. Uh, Josh, this is three sessions, correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, Chat GPT for learning and development certificate starting on July 12th. But J the April uh, session it was already sold out. So then they uh, opened up July 12th, but that's already half sold out. So just yesterday, wow. uh, they opened up registrations for the October 11th uh, sessions. And, and uh, right, Josh, isn't that correct? That's right. Got October okay. dates. There you go. So you can go to uh, trainlibeandonline.com and register for that if you'd like to attend. Get in there and get, while there's still seats left, what happens is, and we had this happen uh, last week, is Salesforce came in and they suddenly sent 35 people uh, to one of our classes and boom, it was full and nobody could get in. So uh, that is one of the reasons that we open up classes way ahead. All right. Uh, also, the Choice Awards are here. This is where you, the members, choose your favorite uh, providers in these categories. Josh will be in here probably by the end of today. Isn't that probably <laughs> right, Josh? Yeah. I, I so. imagine you want to get in right. there, right? Sure. And so go in there and vote. This is this is not one of these deals where a sponsor pays a lot of money and they get the award. No, this, this is these are all chosen by you. And I'll just show you something uh, real quick here to get your attention. Down towards the bottom here, you will see that if you vote, you will be entered for a chance to win a $100 U.S. Bank Visa gift card. So you can go to Choice Awards at Training Mag, or I'll show you in a, in a few moments uh, where you can go. We don't want you to miss out on that. And I know we want to get the webinar done, but that's that's important, okay? And one more thing, uh, we wanted to announce the winners of Ray Jimenez's final book. We've been giving away a few copies of the book that Ray's son finished actually after Ray passed away last November. Uh, and so John Polk of Verizon, Shannon Krowicki of Goodwill, and Brandon De
via a uh, rad partners you are all the winners if you are um if you are here in this session send me a, a chat and i will help you hello kate i see that you are here and you are not artificially intelligent i'm glad to see you and i know that you are actually intelligent um this one more thing here uh, the learning centers i mentioned this before learning centers are place where, where we've gathered all the information together about a particular topic whether it's ray Jimenez, 100 80 webinars that he left us with, or uh, AI and generative AI and now spatial learning. We're going to add to that. Uh, you just go to the home uh, page right here and you will see the, pardon me, the right here part. You'll see the learning centers tab. Just click that and it'll drop down the various learning centers. Right next to that is the choice of words. That's how you vote for the choice of words and win a chance to maybe win a $100 uh, U.S. bank gift card. Now, Last thing, Cornerstone has been a wonderful sponsor uh, for Train Magazine Network ever since Ray and I started uh, 15 years ago. They continue to be, and we want to thank them for sponsoring today's session with Josh. Uh, and Cornerstone is a, a great company who can help you with uh, with your learning, with building a work into a place that works for everybody. Stop by Cornerstone and, uh, and visit and see what they can do maybe to help you out, okay? And I'll help you visit them later on. So let's go ahead and get started finally now with Gen AI tactics for, <laughs> tactics for L&D and from prompts to automation. And before I hand it over to Josh, I want to point out that there are handouts in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. You can see down there uh, a couple of different handouts. Josh can talk more about them. Josh, welcome back to Training Mag Network. Thanks, Gary. Great to be here. I'm just getting my screen shared and we'll get running here. There you go. Diane, do you have audio now? All right. Thank you, Josh. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Hey, welcome everybody. I am Josh. I'm so glad that you are here. Just a little bit about myself. This is my 30th year in L&D. Can you believe it? I was caught up in the vortex and I can't get out. So I started my career as an art director in e-learning back in the 1900s. And now I am doing a lot of AI work. Now, along the way, I did own a uh, training business called Lodestone. Some of you may have heard of it. We were one of the top Adobe authorized training partners. Uh, spent three years in corporate uh, as a learning architect during the COVID years. And then AI showed up and I jumped back into doing my own thing. And the way that that shows up is I do workshops, webinars, I have an online course, all Gen, a Gen AI and L and D. All right, so let's talk about prompting. So for most of you, you may have jumped into ChatGPT or some other model like Copilot or Gemini and have prompted, but where do we go from there? You know, you may have made some productivity gains. And for some of you, you have yet to even prompt. So this may be a background as far as what is going to be completely possible. So, you know, we start with a prompt. But let's say that you have a really good prompt, one that is absolutely amazing. You share it with your coworkers, right? And it's getting 80% of the work done. I know for myself, when I created a multiple choice prompt, that would write those distractors and knock out, you know, 50 multiple choice questions at a clip, man, I knew I had something good and I need to go ahead and save it. And so one of the natural uh, progressions that we make is when you have a prompt that works really well, you want to go ahead and save it in a library, whether it be your own personal library or a team library. But what about from there? Where do we go? Well, the other thing that you want to take a look at is workflows. You know, all of us have detailed workflows, whether we're doing content creation, even email and email marketing or creating performance support content. We all have workflows. And so you may want to progress into a workflow library where you're dedicating prompts to a specific workflow. Now, I'm going to be showing examples of all of these. So you have a really clear picture of what they look like and how they should function. But let's take it one step further. Automations. When you have a workflow that is vetted out using AI, 
you may want to investigate automating that process. And we're going to take a look at the maturation process going from a prompt all the way to an automation. But believe it or not, there's a step after this. And that step after an automation is if you want AI to take the wheel and make it an agent. Now, you know, some may say, well, agents are going to be completely autonomous. I think there's going to be a lot of human in the loop and there might be a little bit of a struggle there. But at the end of the day, it's a partnership. And no matter how far we get with AI, always remember that it's human, AI, and human, always. Uh, and so, you know, as I describe this whole entire workflow, just keep that in mind that, you know, eventually we may get to a point where you do have autonomous agents doing some of the mundane work. And then there's going to be times when you have to be in the loop to go ahead and approve what is happening with the content or problem solving or whatever the case may be. At the end of the day, no matter if you're doing a simple prompt or you're doing an automation, you must know your craft. Whether you're creating a video script or an e-learning storyboard or doing a learning needs analysis or creating some type of micro learning performance support content, you must know your craft so that when you get results coming back from AI, you know how to judge that content, whether it's good and acceptable or if it needs some work, okay? So keep that in mind. It's just not gonna knock it out and do everything for you. I wanna introduce you to this workflow called the Prompt Evolution Pathway. And the way that this works is that we go in and we start with a prompt. We want to address, again, maybe a content creation opportunity that we have, some problem solving, even some creative. From there, we're going to go and create a prompt library. Like I mentioned, if a prompt is really valuable, you're going to want to store it. Those prompts then will mature into a workflow library where you'll have individual prompts that are part of a workflow and then you'll vet that workflow out. Then we get into an automation. Once you've vetted a workflow out and you know something is incredibly valuable that can be automated, whether it's completely autonomous or a human in the loop, you can then go in and build an automation. And then we have autonomous agents, right, at the end. So, Let's go ahead and let's break this down. I now have examples of each of these. Again, I wanted to paint the whole picture for you so you have an idea of where we're headed here. So let's first get into the prompt. Now today, my example is gonna be a video script. And we're gonna take a video script from a simple prompt all the way out to automation, and maybe if you stick around to the end, an agent, all right? So prompting. Well, for many of you, you're investigating prompting and the way that prompting shows up. You may have tried different formulas. Heck, you may have just gone in and have just typed a couple of sentences in there asking ChatGPT or Gemini or Copilot to go ahead and help you create some content. Maybe you write a video script or multiple choice questions, e-learning storyboard, whatever the case may be. Now, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at a video script. If you've downloaded the handout, Okay, so I have one handout called Prompt to Automation. That is a PDF that has the prompts that I'm gonna be using today. So if you wanna prompt along with me, you're more than welcome to. All right, well, let's get after it. Uh, so for this one, we're gonna go ahead and focus in on the prompt. Let me go over to ChatGPT and let's just start with a simple prompt. Now for this prompt to create a video script, it has a certain format to it, all right? So when you when you take a look at the prompt, there is kind of a method to the madness, even when this free form structure. And so before I run this, I wanna just take a moment and just go over that. So for those of you that are just starting out, when you, when you create a prompt, and I'm just gonna go ahead and you already know the models there. When you create a prompt, you have a choice to make. 
you can go ahead and use a free form prompt or you can use a structured prompt. And I'll get to that in just a moment. So a free form prompt is just going in and asking the model to do something for you, right? So if you're just getting started, here's a formula for you. If you include the role, so professionally, like who would actually do that task? Is it a learning architect? Is it a financial planner? Again, who's the profession or the professional to do the task? Then you have to go in and list the task. And then finally you go in and list some instructions. All right, so in this example, what we have is as an instructional designer, educational video producer, and food safety expert. See inside scoop here, you're allowed to do that. We call that role stacking. So you can have multiple roles in play here, just don't pick one. So because I need an instructional designer, make it instructionally sound, an education video producer to go ahead and write the script. And then I need a subject matter expert, which is the, the food safety expert. Your task is to create training video script on an introduction to cross-contamination. This topic is crucial for professional development and directly relevant to daily life. Keep the video script to two minutes, maintaining an upbeat and welcoming tone. Remember, your target audience is a vibrant group of new hires between 18 and 24. All right, let's see what it creates. So I'm using the GPT-4 model, which is the best model that's out there, and it's now going in and creating the script for me. So, you know, it has some indicators as far as what's on the screen, the visual, the presenter is, we have the script for the presenter. Hello, everyone, welcome to our quick guide. Now it does the, imagine you just use a cutting board, so it gives the, you know, priming and it gives the information. All right, so we're not gonna look at the whole entire script here, but hey, just at first glance, this looks pretty good, not too bad. All right, so next, once you go in and you vet your prompt and you start to see some progress, you may wanna get more detailed. And this is where we have a structured prompt. So a structured prompt is typically a formula that you use to deepen the prompt to get finer results. So let's say for instance, with an educational video, you have a formula. Maybe you want to gain attention at the beginning of that video, right? Everyone's trying to gain attention these days. So you have a hook and then you prime them. What are we gonna talk about? Then you have the content and then you have a review and then you have a call to action. That's a very common format. So instead of having ChatGPT roll the dice and just make up a video script for you with any kind of format, we can get specific. And so again, when you wanna put guardrails into the prompt and have a highly refined output, we use a structured prompt. So how does that show up? Well, one of the formulas that I like to use is the Tracy prompt, which stands for task, role, audience, create, and intent. There's some other prompt structures that are out there. That's just not the only one, like task role details, role audience format task, and even co-star, which is context, objective, style, tone, and audience. As far as like the formats or the way the prompt looks itself, if you're a programmer or like the program, you can do JSON. You can use YAML, which is called yet another markup language, and you can go really crazy and use a format called Macromancy. Now today, um, you're actually going to see this format in uh, J actually a markdown format, which is easy to follow. Okay, so you'll notice that in the handout that the Tracy format, those sections are highlighted in bold. And again, it's easy to look at. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at this structured prompt. So I'm actually just going ahead and setting this up. So I'm running another chat in ChatGPT. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the prompt from the document. Now you can't see that just yet. I'm kind of doing it in the background here. So let me just go ahead and copy that and get it into the clipboard and bring it back over here and let me paste it in. And so what we have here is the Tracy prompt. You can see task, create an educational video script on an introduction to cross-contamination, the role, instructional designer, educational video producer, and food safety expert, and so on. You get the you get the drift, right? So you can go ahead and check out that prompt on your own by downloading the handout. 
and let's run it. All right, so that prompt is running, and now we have this video script, and it is very, very specific in regards to the format. Check out now at the beginning, I have a YouTube style hook. Then we get into priming the viewer as far as what the content is going to be. In this video, we'll explore what cross contamination is, how it can occur in your kitchen, and so on. Then we have the content. We should then have the review. Yep, here's the reflection. To sum it up, avoiding cross-contamination is about mindful food handling. And then we have the emotional push or the call to action. Are you ready to be a food safety superhero in your own kitchen? Start applying these practices today. Fantastic. I love this because when I look at this script, I'm about 80 or 90% there. Now, obviously, like I mentioned before, human, AI, human, and you're going to want to make that change and make that modification, all right? But you can see that it's a, pro a progression. You start with a simple prompt, you vet it out, and then you get into the details, okay? All right, well, now let's say that we're rocking with this prompt. Well, you can keep it to yourself if you want, but you know what? I bet you want to share it with your team members. <laughs> so how does that show up? Well, you're going to want to go ahead and create a prompt library. I highly recommend you taking the time and starting this process. Don't recreate the wheel. If you hit a home run with a prompt, my gosh, store it, okay? Because you're going to come back to it eventually and use that again. You may begin to refine it and tweak it depending upon the models that you use and structures and things like that, okay? So now with a prompt library, here we are, right here, second step. And again, some tools that you can use for a prompt library include Excel. Don't overthink this, okay? Just a simple, you know, little database or sheets, Google Sheets, Monday.com, Notion, even a GPT. So for some of you, you know, you'll have access to Excel and Sheets, maybe monday.com. Let's take a look at Notion. This is what Notion looks like. So Notion is going to look something like this. This is my 250 prompts for learning and development. This is really cool because you can actually come into this prompt list and I can come in here and type in a search term like video. Here's all my video prompts. Actually, let me clear this out so you can see everything in here. Look at these prompts. Key learning points, learning objectives, so on. And I'm like, hey, I need to go ahead and find a prompt on video because we are talking about video scripts today. So I'm going to type in video. Here are my video prompts. I click on the prompt. Boom, there's my prompt. I hit copy. I'm ready to rock. I can paste that in the chat GPT and I'm good to go. Oh, I bet you're asking, hey, how do I get access to all those prompts, Josh? Sure. Well, in chat, there is a hyperlink for you. Boom, put your, you, put your name and your email in there. I don't spam. You'll get access to the 250 prompts, okay? So grab that hyperlink and check it out. So this is a Notion. I love Notion. It just works for me. You may not have access to it, so you can use Sheets or, or Excel or whatever you got, okay? All right, now let's go back. Let's talk about GPTs. So what the heck is a GPT? Well, GPTs are a way for you to go in and build some automation or some, you know, like a prompt library uh, inside the OpenAI environment. So if you have the team or the enterprise license from OpenAI, you can build a GPT. Let me show you what that looks like. So back over to ChatGPT we go. And up at the top left-hand corner, you can see here are some GPTs. Now, if I click on Explore GPTs, these are functions in the OpenAI environment to where they do something. Okay, they do something. So, for instance, here, here I have a multiple choice GPT. I can click on that, and I want to create questions on leadership. So, there, behind the scenes, there's a prompt that's been vetted out 
you can even upload your own data. So if you have a document and you want to upload that document, that's going to influence the output from the GPT. You can do that. Now you have to be on the team or the enterprise account to actually store your GPTs. But if I go ahead and just click on create questions on leadership, boom. Sure, I can create multiple choice questions on leadership. So believe it or not, my prompt, uh, let's see what's asking you. These questions focus on just do general. <laughs> let's, I mean, I could do like how to handle difficult, a difficult conversation or whatever like that. So let's do 10. It's just asking me all kinds of questions here. It should start cranking them out. Okay, here we go. So it's knocking it out. It's showing me what the correct answer is. And I got an explanation. We got two distractors, one correct answer. Okay, pretty cool. And you can actually search for my multiple choice question creator 1.03 to get access. That is a public GPT. If you want to go in and start write your own multiple choice questions in there. Okay, that again, you have to be on the OpenAI paid plus account at least to access GPTs. So again, in the overall framework, so many different tools to take your prompts, store them. Um, again, my favorite's Notion. Some things to think about when you're making a prompt library, you have all these different items that you may wanna put in there. Category, keywords, is it confidential information? Associated resources, is it a tested model? So are we using GPT-4? Are we using Gemini? Are we using uh, Claude Opus? What are we using? When was it created? When was it last modified? What was the version? Who is the creator? The status. Usage and feedback. I'll give you a moment, screenshot that. Okay. I'm sure you guys got your screenshotting down. <laughs> All right. So some of the things to think about as you're building your prompt library. What do you do day in and day out? Right? What are you cranking on? That's what you want to focus in on. What's that workflow? You want to store those prompts first. Document those workflows. You're going to see why in just a second. Create a productive prompt. We saw the difference between a free form and structured. You create your library, you add to your library, you commun communicate out when a new prompt goes into that library, if it, you're sharing with your team members, you update it, and you can even retire prompts. Clean it out, just don't leave old prompts up there. So it's a living, breathing storage for your prompts. All right, now where do we go? This where it gets interesting. We can begin to take these prompts and put them into a workflow. Now the workflow I'm gonna share with you right here is also in Notion. And this is one of my YouTube workflows. I mean, we can apply it to l and I simply need to go in and create a script. I gotta cut the video and then there's outputs from the video, correct? So here is my workflow library. Again, just to show you where we're at. So we do prompt, prompt library. Now we're gonna do a workflow library. So the workflow library looks something like this. Bear with me. This is my weekly YouTube publishing workflow. The workflow flows from top to bottom. So you know, when we're talking about YouTube, I need to go ahead and create a title. Believe it or not, this is the prompt to create a YouTube title. There's a method to the madness, okay? And then I have to create a YouTube thumbnail, and that's in Canva. And then a YouTube description, see the title prompt, right? So I can actually go ahead and use this for two for one deal. I can do the, the title and the description. The YouTube script is right here, that's my prompt. Then I go and record my video in Camtasia, my stills I can get from Envato, or here's a prompt for Mid Journey. And for those that for those of you that are not familiar, Mid Journey is an image creation model, same like Dolly in the OpenAI environment. My B-roll, 
My audio effects is in Votto. My music is in Suno.ai. Highly recommend you checking that out. I'll put that in chat. Check out Suno.ai for music creation. You'll thank me later. Uh, audition, video edit in Camtasia, render, video to blog post, castmagic.io. Now, why would I want to do this, right? Why would I want to take the time and document this workflow and put all these prompts in here? Here's a reason why. One, you're giving yourself agency. That's the big message here. I need you guys to feel empowered that you are in control because we are going to be hit with a barrage of tools that are out there, okay? Vendors are hot to trot. God bless them. Love it. Tons of great tools that are coming out. But how do you know whether you need to continue putting in a custom workflow with prompts that you create or leverage a tool that's out there, right? Well, I mean, you need to go ahead and decide, hey, is this tool going to give us a one plus one equals three, right? Is it going to give us some type of advantage to where we don't have to prompt or we can take a prompt and then fit it into a workflow that represents this? I mean, there may be a tool coming out that does all of this for me, right? And that's where you need to be. Let me go ahead and give you an example. Now, notice down at the bottom of this workflow that I, I have castmagic.io, video to blog post. So in other words, after I record my YouTube video, I want to take that transcript and leverage it in different formats. In this case, a blog post. The way that that shows up is over here in Cast Magic. I can go in and here's some recordings. Here's one on a chat bot. Let me just click on that. And so this is my transcript. Just to give you some context, I know I'm, I'm jumping around a lot. I appreciate you paying attention. Uh, so what you see here is I've taken an MP4 video. You can also do an MP3. So if you do podcast, you can do that. And I've uploaded it here to Cast Magic. What do I get? One, it does a transcript for me. Cool. Two, I can go ahead and download closed caption files, SRT, VTT. Cool, awesome. But what else? Oh, this is where it gets awesome. So now I can go to AI content and it takes the transcript and through a prompt, converts it into a different format. So it can take my transcript and convert it into a one sentence summary, keywords, time stamped overview, key session themes, key topics. Let's keep going. A session worksheet. Why not? Let's make a worksheet out of that transcript. Let's keep going. What else? It can do questions from that video. An analogy. Okay. Uh, follow-up email. So if you're emailing the uh, video out or you, know, you want to follow up about what they learned in the video, you can do that. What else? Goals and objectives. Hey, how about some multiple choice questions from that video? Sure. Why not? Um, what's in the video? And a blog post. It's generating the blog post. Wow. This is what I call workflow compression. You are going to see this occurring in the marketplace to where workflows that we've used for years, okay, tools that we have used for years are going to start compressing these workflows. And this, this is the rub. You need to decide if you have to use custom prompts into that workflow with the tool, or you let the vendor decide the prompt. Y'all, all I know is that there are prompts running in the background, okay? And you need to have agency. You need to make the call, all right? In this case, I love castmagic.io. I use it all the time. All right, so now, next. So once we have the workflow library, then we're going to get into automations, right? So you have gone ahead, oh, about the tools as far as workflow. It's the same as the prompt library. So Notion, Monday.com, Excel, Sheets, you get it, right? 
you use the same tools as you would use your prompt library. In this, my case, it's Notion. Let's now get into automation. This is where it gets a little crazy. Again, give yourself agency. Vendors are going to come out with solutions. They're going to automate a lot of these processes, but got to step back. Is this something I want to control? Or is this something that we have to bring in-house because it's so proprietary that we need to go ahead and maintain the automation? All right. And so again, we go prompt, prompt library, workflow to automation. Some of the tools you can use to automate include make.com, Zapier. For those of you that are in the Microsoft tenant or Microsoft platform, you have it. Power Automate, check it out. You already have this capability, so you don't have to go out and buy another tool. A couple others, levity.ai, Respell. Okay, well, let's take a look at an automation. We're going to have some fun with this. So the automation that we're going to do today begins with this form, the video script generator. So the video script generator has what's the topic, who's the audience, what's the learning objective, and your email address. Now, this form, when it gets processed, so when it's complete and it's processed, it goes into a Google Sheet. Here are some of my test statements or some of my tests that I was doing, right? What's the topic? Who's the audience? Learning objective. What's your email address? Well, I'm going to use make.com. And for this automation, we start with a Google Sheet, and it's the same sheet as here. And what I'm telling make.com to do is when a new row goes in the Google Sheet, I'm not going to get into all the details here, but you have to do a little bit of, you know, you have to connect to your Google account. You have to go in and say, hey, which Google Sheet? You have to go in and say which, um, you know, sheet name it is and so on. But once you get that locked in, you can then say, okay, I want to take information from that form and I want to put it into chat GPT. So you can actually take words or content from the form and put it in chat GPT. So believe it or not, I have a prompt here that's taking items from that form and it's writing a custom script. So I can say, you know, again, based upon the form, what's the topic? Who's the audience? What's the learning objective? What's your email address? Boom. Just go ahead and throw it in the prompt. And then once the prompt is done and it runs, I get a video script, but the video script is going to be emailed. All right. Now, this is a very simple automation, but I believe it illustrates that next level type activity that when you have a workflow, and you need to go in and start automating. This could be emails. This could be, uh, you know, you can create images. You can hook into all kinds of different applications that's part of your learning ecosystem. Now, here comes the fun part. Gosh, I hope this works. So I actually have that link to that form here, and I'm going to put it in the chat. There it is. If you want, you can go ahead and try to create a video script and it will be emailed to you. I'm not collecting the email addresses. It's just so you can actually see it work, okay? Now this should be interesting because this automation runs once every minute, so it could be delayed. If you go up there and you get a, a video script 15, 20 minutes or a half hour from now, you'll know why. So it's not exactly instantaneous, but you can still have fun with it and create whatever topic you want. I even did one earlier about scrambling eggs and making cookies and it worked just fine. Okay. So give it a go and you can try that on your own to uh, fill that form out quickly and make your own video script. So this is an automation. This is an automation. And this is just the beginning. I believe that as L&D professionals, that automations 
and orchestrations is going to be a skill you'll need. Okay. Uh, and again, you know, the systems that we're going to be working with that are going to be influenced by AI will automate a lot of the work that we do today. But I need you to have agency. I want you to learn how to build these automations. Okay. So you can vet out the automation platform, the tools, the prompts, and all of that. Okay, let's get out the crystal ball. What if we take this one step further? What if these automations are absolutely rocking? They're solid, they don't break. Um, we use them day in and day out. They're part of a standard operating procedure, right? Well, we may wanna go one step further and make them an agent. Now with an agent, this is where we can have processes spin up automatically agents talking to agents, determining what kind of content or automation needs to be kicked in. It gets a little crazy, but you need to be aware that this type of activity is happening today, but not at scale, but not at scale. Okay. But it's happening today. And so how does this show up? Well, the agent Oh, by the way, here's this is what the um, the video script is going to look like if, if you get it. OK, so it's going to be emailed to you and says, hello, here's your video script. And there's the script. And thanks for me. All right. So. You get to the agent. So the way the agent is going to work is that these agents, again, are going to be a combination of a prompt programming automations, they're all going to be built in there. But the one thing I want you to keep in mind, remember how we started this conversation about a prompt? Well, you know what? Even when we get to agentic, there's a new word for you, agentic, agentic workflows. Guess what? There's prompts still in here. What you're looking at is the programming of one of these agents. And you know what's in there? Look at this. That right there, my friends, is a prompt. What's over here? A prompt. Hey, what's up here? A prompt. Prompt engineering is not going away. It may show up differently for you. You may not have to do this type of work. It may be already in an application, but I'm telling you, in the background, when we're when we're talking about the automation, Gen AI in content creation, prompts are always there. They're always there unless the AI eventually automates and creates the prompt. We haven't gotten to that point yet, right? We haven't gotten to that point. Hey, one other thing I want to I want to mention is that when you begin to do these automations and you start tapping into chat GPT, you have to use the API or application programming interface in the background to connect. And you know what? That costs money. That costs money. This is not like just getting a plus account or an enterprise or a team account. You are making a unique call to the model that now for each call, it could be pennies, right? So I want to show you a dashboard to illustrate something. This morning, I went ahead and hooked up an API, okay, or a key to actually get this to work. And as of this morning, I have spent a total of 15 cents. So my gosh, please be kind with that form because every time you use the form, it's like a penny <laughs> or two cents. And don't be surprised if like later on this week, I take that thing down. I don't know how long I'm just going to be monitoring it and, you know, submit, submit, submit. There goes my lunch money. So again, just be mindful that there is a cost to this uh, in the background. Um, now, I see a question in there from Kate, and I, I apologize, y'all, for not addressing your questions as you're asking them. Please reach out to me afterwards. I just had so much content. Uh, in this presentation, I want to make sure I got through it all. Um, 
if you update your prompts, does the library automatically get updated? It does not. That's a very manual process. Now, I wonder if you could build an automation for that. That's getting a little meta, but no, I know that for myself, I always have to go in and copy and paste the prompt and get it into Notion. All right. Okay. So again, the prompt evolution pathway, let's just review. You're going to go ahead and start with a really, really good freeform prompt. Eventually, it becomes a structured prompt, right? You're doing some deep, deep work. You get that into a library, Notion, Monday.com, Excel, you name it. And then once that's in the library, then you can go ahead and focus in on your workflows. I mean, you're already in your workflows. Well, you might as well go ahead and start documenting them. And then you have a choice. Like I mentioned before, you can decide, do I want to lean on a vendor's tool to do this work, to do this automation? Maybe you're using it hand in hand, like castmagic.io, to where it's kind of, you know, both of you working on it. You have a transcript that you have, you use a prompt to convert it into a specific output, right? So you kind of meet in the middle. Or... Maybe you're like, ah, heck with the vendor. We're going to go solo on this and crank this up on our own. We're going to build our own workflow library and we're going to build our own automations. Again, agency. Do you want to have ownership of that? But then do you also want to document it and maintain it? Right? Or do you want to lean on your vendor and maybe have a partnership there or just, you know, use the vendor's tool? And then we get into agents. And those agents are going to take these automations that have been vetted out and do amazing things to go in and potentially create a whole entire learning journey over the weekend, right? I mean, how many times, especially those of you that support the sales function to where Friday comes, are like, we need a new strategy on Monday, <laughs> right? Maybe there's a new skew, there's a new sales pitch, whatever the case may be. We need to react. Same thing like during COVID. My gosh, everyone had to react and go online. There was training going on everywhere about how do you do virtual training or virtual meetings, right? Well, in the future, you can go in and orchestrate an agent to create an entire personalized learning journey for your associates. Obviously, you're going to vet that out before it gets released, but that's the idea. So this is a this is a, a progression. This is a progression. This is not going to happen overnight. Again, it's all happening now, but just not at scale. Some agent tools you may want to poke around or take a look at. Beam.ai. Again, if you're on a Microsoft tenant or platform, Microsoft AutoGen, that was the example code that I showed. AIagent.app. Taskaid.com. Screenshot it. You know, so if you if you want to go ahead and tell your leader, or if you are a leader and you want to look at agents, you, again, I told you I'm getting the crystal ball out here uh, as far as what's coming down the pipe. Um, don't put your head in the sand, y'all. Like, really get out there and learn how to prompt and just get those fundamentals down. All right. Now, if you want to learn more, my gosh, follow me on LinkedIn because I am posting daily on anything and everything AI and L&D. Uh, you know, I mentioned programming. So here is the link to the training mag certificate. Now, the cool thing about that certificate program is that, you know, I am uh, delivering it live, okay? which is awesome. A lot of round trip conversations and whatnot. Um, also, a couple other resources I wanna give you before I get into the questions. If you, if you don't, <laughs> like if you, if you can't because of scheduling or you, know, you wanna go ahead and take it at your own pace, I have a similar experience here. Boom, you get 25% off if you wanna check that out. Also, I do free Live training every Friday. If you downloaded the handout, you saw brain power. Here's the upcoming episode. If you want to do some hands on with me this Friday, 
I uh, don't know where the chat's at. It's right down underneath you. Oh, there we go. It moved on me, Gary. I yep. got one more. Boom. Brain power. And I think with that, Gary, we got a little bit of time for questions. Well, we've got a couple other things we got to do before questions. So, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, we want to get everybody. That's right. We're just almost at the top of the hour. I don't mind going over. But what's the best or most useful thing you learned from Josh? I see a lot of comments in there saying best webinar uh, ever. But why? What did you learn that was so great? Uh, fill that out, please. And I'll tell Josh and other Train Mag Network members uh, what was so great about this webinar and help guide them. Uh, if they're wondering if they should watch the recording of this webinar. And also, I want to thank our friends at Cornerstone again for making this and many of the other webinars of, that you attend free by sponsoring it and and so forth. So with that, Josh, well, then we can, we can go ahead and uh, <laughs> take some questions. You know, Bill Stafford asked a long time ago, and I didn't want to interrupt you yeah. uh, with any of this, but Bill said cross-contamination for two minute video is a pretty general idea remember you were talking about this way back early in the in the session yeah and and so his question was how does the prompting change if we needed a script for say oh hypothetically a 12 slide e-learning on yep. modes of dialysis treatment mm -hmm. yeah i mean you would simply go in and just ask the model you got to keep in mind that these closed source models are massive like the amount of information in them is the whole entire internet all of wikipedia and you know what odds are it understands those words and so you just ask instead of a video a two minute video script you ask for 12 slides with a title with bullet points and you know what odds are especially like gpt4 it's going to go ahead and give you what you ask for Okay. I have a question uh, here from Jesse. It's from me. Jesse, I see your question. I'll, I'll take care of it. Uh, and, you know, Josh, I think you've talked about this before, but, but let's answer Michael's question they sent uh, to me. I appreciate this. Is there a webinar that explains the differences between Gen AI and conversational AI? I'd love to see this kind of webinar uh, on this. Do you have some comments on that? I mean, you're not going to cook up a webinar right now, but what yeah. do you have to say, Josh? Yeah, that's a, it's really critical to understand the whole entire like AI ecosystem uh, from deep learning, machine learning, conversational. Uh, this is just not about Gen AI uh, because you know there's some vendors that have been using machine learning for years to go in and build questions on the fly or do a learning path, that kind of thing. So, I mean. You know, Gen AI takes up a lot of the conversation in regards to a resource. Gary, I don't know if there has been like a, a webinar exclusive to just this conversation. It should be, you know, an important one for digital literacy. I know that Marcus uh, talks a lot about uh, the, the different uh, aspects of machine learning and deep learning and Gen AI, and he may mention it in his next upcoming webinar. Or maybe I could get him to do another webinar about that unless you want to take that job. <laughs> right. So, uh, exactly. so we'll see. So we'll look into that. And thank you. Appreciate the uh, the suggestion on that one. Uh, uh, we also had somebody, and I think it was Samara, who said, I understand the concept and importance of prompting, but my company is lagging on AI. So almost everything else was too technical for my level. Can someone point me to where I can learn about the more technical aspects of today? So Josh... Just suggestions on this? Yeah, as far as like uh, the, the technical aspects, um, I, I really don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I may have something cooking in the background, <laughs> possibly, <laughs> but uh, I don't want to give that away too soon. But uh, um, again, this is evolving and changing daily, but we see the maturation process happening. I would suspect that there will be more information about how to do the technical things in regards to automation. In the meantime, I would just say, go up to YouTube, check out make.com videos or Notion videos on just how to use those platforms. And hopefully the, 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 the puzzle pieces will fit for you. Again, I went ahead and I put my email in the chat. Just reach out, 
Okay, so if you didn't get your question answered in this seminar, you have my contact information. Just kick the question over to me. I'll be more than happy to, to give you some direction. Okay, Josh, you feel like going uh, a little bit more here? We're right at the top oh, of the yeah, hour. Oh, yeah, let's go. Okay. Um, wait, wait, let me take All a right. drink. It's just seltzer. Anything good? Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay. So here we are. So we have questions. Uh, we have requests from other people for you yeah. to answer Beth's question. So it's a very popular uh, question here. She says, I've been pretty successful with my prompts, but struggle when wanting chat, uh, oh, chat GPT to research interpersonal and conceptual connect to create a task analysis, which will then become my content to teach. We're creating yeah. workshops from scratch and I'd like to streamline the yep. research process. Any prompt suggestions? So there's, there's two things that come to mind. One is if you have an open AI plus account, there is a brand new memory feature. It may even be on the free account, but the memory feature is going to remember certain aspects about you, your work and the content that you work on. All right. So you can turn that memory feature on to maintain consistency across chats. The second way is by uploading documents. Now make sure that you have a secure connection that's on micro or sorry, open AI teams and enterprise that's secure, or you have some type of portal that your IT department has set up that when you prompt it's secure, but you can upload documents that has that information in there so that it influences the output coming from chat GPT. So between the memory feature and uploading your own documents, Hopefully that gets you more narrowed and more focused outputs. And as you said, send you a note, right? Yeah. Uh, what if I don't have those documents? Well, uh, you could leverage the model and ask it questions about that domain. So believe it or not, I mean, like, again, odds are the information about a medical procedure, about a financial institution, you name it. The, it's in the models from the training data. So you can first start out by asking the model what it knows about a topic. What do you know about how to handle difficult conversations? Show me. It then goes in and shows you the information. If it vets, if it like it's good, then start prompting against that result. Uh, that way it's more fine tuned and the words that you use prior will affect the different outputs. Great. Thank you, Josh. And, mm -hmm. and I know other people have more questions. Um, and it says, uh, ask it to tell you what to ask. I see some people are saying they've already signed up for your class. And go ahead, Josh. Thank you you, you. look inspired. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and thank uh, Cornerstone one more time. I invite you all to visit uh, the cornerstoneondemand.com site. Uh, to see how Cornerstone might help you. There's some information there about VR and AI and uh, and more resources on these topics. So we invite you to do that. And uh, go visit Josh in his class. Josh, did you already put in a, a link uh, to your YouTube yep. channel? You did? Okay. Yeah. Yep. So uh, hopefully everyone's got all the links. Great. Hey, I want to add, did anyone actually fill out the form and get a script? Did it actually work? I hope it worked. Let's see what happened. Blocks at my company. Ah, Holly says it worked. Oh, Amy says goodness. I filled it out. I haven't gotten the script yet. Okay. It's going to take some time. Again, it only processes one row a minute. So <laughs> at oh. least somebody <laughs> got it. So I know it's working. <laughs> oh, Denise says it worked for her also. So, so it sounds like it's working. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Josh, for, you know, I, I try to twist Josh's arm as much as I can, but he's a pretty busy <laughs> guy by, because he's teaching all these classes that you folks want him to teach. But we'll ask him to come back and, and uh, share some more with us uh, as soon as he can. And uh, he's gotten some good suggestions on topics, uh, I believe, in, in this. Uh, so, Josh, let me know what, uh, what's next here. We've got some spots open just for you. Great. Thanks, Gary. I really appreciate right. the opportunity.
And thanks, everybody. Uh, thank uh, you again to Cornerstone On Demand for, uh, for making this session possible. So take care, everybody. Have a great day. Go prompt like crazy. <laughs> and, yeah, watch the recording. Uh, be sure and go to the recordings uh, in Train Mag Network and uh, look at uh, uh, Josh's previous recordings, as well as some of the others we've had on AI recently, especially that can of worms. Uh, one that we did last week. And so everybody, and I owe somebody a link and I'm going to get that for you now to raise book. Uh, thanks everybody. Take care.